Hey guys, hello and welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem. This is part number nine. I'm in HSC06. Let's get going. Alright, so now we're going to do this bonus chapter here. Um, right now, this is the um, item select screen where you can give different items to people. As you can see, I'm trading items around to uh, what items would fit people the best. In all actuality, I probably won't be showing this very often because it takes too long and it really just eats up time. So what I'm probably going to do is this is the last time you actually see me do this, unless it's a crucial development or something neat happens and stuff in that in that regard. So we're going to leave Florina and uh, Wrath out of this. We're going to bring Nels and Lucius instead. We're going to do some formation changing here. There's a chest up there on our left, so we're definitely going to want to utilize Matthew. We'll switch them around, keep Nils close. And there's a lot of um, distance units here, so these guys are attackers from far, <laughs> I guess you could say. So we're going to move them around. Everything else looks pretty solid. Yeah, that should be good. And we're going to go ahead and save, and let's get going. We're going to just play defense like always. I'm going to bring Dorcas over this way and have Nails give him another turn. Remember, keep using Nails as much as you can. So we're going to do this. Yes, that sounds good. Bring Matthew up along this way. He will be responsible for getting that chest in a few turns. We have yes, we're gonna have Irk attack this soldier here. He's kind of lacking. Excellent, and a level up. Wow, he's only level three, but he did get skill and speed points, which is good. Be able to attack more effectively now. Good news. Okay. Everyone else is pretty much where I want them to be. Not too much more that I can do on this turn. Besides, just move some my other units around. And let's watch some defense. Excellent. <clears throat> and I actually am impressed by the fact that he has a 100% hit rate. Because generally the hit rate of uh, axe fighters isn't the best because their skill is ridiculously low. And it's a vulnerable. This is good. Yeah, see... And there's an example of, in a later game, there's a, um, oh, I don't remember his name, but there's a, uh, an axe fighter who you actually get to use a brigand, like the guy, uh, the guy that attacked Sane, you get to use a brigand yourself, and his skill rating throughout the game is ridiculously bad. And if you can manage to, in some way, boost that skill rating for that character, then he becomes, like, godlike, but still... If you can, then he's pretty much just garbage. Alright, so you can see here there's a thief that they have themselves, so he's gonna try to race us to get to get that chest. To be honest, it's not what's in that chest isn't really, you know, remarkable, but you should always try to get it, because you never know. I mean if you haven't played this game before, which I'm sure some of you haven't, then you wouldn't know if it was good or not, so you should always try to get it. Unless you look it up online, but then that makes you a cheater. Okay, it doesn't make you a cheater, but... You know. You should always just try to figure things out for yourself first before going for help. Alright. Awesome. Let's see what we've got up here. We've got some sword fighters. Go ahead and move Lynn up there. Although she is, a. Uh, her iron sword is going to break fairly soon. Let's see. Okay. How about this? We're going to have Dorcas try to break down this wall. He won't be able to break it down this turn. We're going to have Will attack this archer. Nice. Um, I guess something to note is that throughout the game you're going to get multiple characters which all have the same class. Like you'll get a 
couple archers, you'll get multiple axemen, you know, you're gonna get a few of many characters throughout the game, so it gives you variety in terms of allowing you to pick which characters you want based on how good or how bad they do. So if one of your characters, I guess I can go ahead and give a little spoiler here, you're going to get two archers throughout this game, and if one of them turns out to just be complete garbage, then you know you can always depend on the second one. So don't be alarmed if your first archer sucks and you're like, oh crap, I'm not going to have an, a good archer throughout the game, but that's not necessarily the case. And more often than not, you should be able to have multiple archers, and if one of them turns out better than the other, then just feel free to use that one from that point on. But there are a certain amount of characters who are unique in the fact that you only get one, so when we get to those characters, I'll let you know. But we actually have a couple of them now. Uh, when we get to those characters, you have to be sure and... Um, just hope, I guess, hope and pray that those characters turn out well because you only get one and if you screw it up, well, I guess if the RNG screws up, it's not technically your fault if that happens. So, you just gotta hope and pray that you get good characters, that's all. It's a little bit beyond your control. And so far in this playthrough, I've had decent random number generator success, so hopefully that will that will keep up for me. All right, moving right along. Huh, miss. That's what I love about thieves is their uh, avoid stat is so high that generally it's very, very difficult to hit them. It's one of the best parts about them. Definitely doing much better this recording than my last one. I actually had a character die. I had recorded this part, which is part nine, and I recorded part 10 uh, when I got home on Friday. Today is now Sunday. When I got home on Friday, and I had one of my characters die, and I hadn't saved any of the chapters prior, so I had to get rid of all of those. Okay, well that thief hightailed it out of there, so that's good news for us. Hmm. Let's go ahead and let Dorcas get this kill here. Maybe he'll get a level up out of this. Maybe, maybe not. Nope. Close, though. That's okay. Alright, go ahead and allow Will to finish off this mercenary. He's leveling up quite nicely. He, his stats are actually turning out to be quite good, which is, I guess, just a matter of luck because Will is kind of like those hit or miss characters where either he's really good or he's just really mediocre. So. Oh, critical. Boom! I like this critical. That'd be neat to be able to do in real life. Or is this real life? Hmm, interesting. Okay. So I'm gonna have Sane and Kent double attack this guy. I'm getting up on him. Almost finished here. I don't foresee finishing this part, but we'll probably be able to wrap it up next part. There won't be much left to do. But anyway, keep progressing on your characters upwards. Not too much left to do. Alright. Eh. There we go. Level up with one experience point. Nice. Oh, great. Resistance. Most of your melee characters usually won't get any points for resistance. And if they do get points, it's very rare. So you should consider yourself lucky if that happens. Hmm. Put myself into a little bit of a predicament here. Let's see. Alright. Let's use Kent instead. Oh, whoops, I moved him over one too far. Guess we're using Sane this time, then. My mistake. Alright, there we go. 
help Matthew out a little bit here. We we'll use the sword. He's better with the sword. All right. So close to being finished. So close. I can almost taste the end of Lin's chapter, which I dislike immensely. Mm -mm -mm. I still think shamans are one of the coolest classes in the game. That's just my opinion. Alright, another level up. Great. Eh. Decent level up. Could have been better. Alright, this boss also does not move, so feel free to position your units anywhere you want to. I'm gonna hurry up and try to move all the rest of my characters here, and then we'll end it. Alright, I'm in HSCO6, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.